Watergate started with the break-in at the, at the Watergate Hotel, and I happened to be in New Orleans, if I remember, when that happened. And the man whose office was broken into was Larry O'Brien, who was head of the uh, Democratic National Committee. And he was at the governor's convention that I was at. And as luck would have it, flying back, he was sitting next to me in the plane. And as we were flying back on that Sunday, I guess it was, it happened the night before. I said, well, why would they break into your office? He says, beats the heck out of me. He said, there's nothing in my office that's worth breaking in there for. He says, I don't care whether it was Republicans, Democrats, or anybody. He says, there's nothing in there. And nobody knew the extent of what was going on at that time. I mean, it was way out of proportion. But then the networks decided as the Watergate hearings were going on, they would rotate like one month ABC would cover the Watergate hearings and then and maybe it wasn't a month maybe it was two weeks but something like that they would cover it then CBS would cover it for two weeks and then NBC would cover it for two weeks and then it would go back to ABC so we all had our turn to cover the actual hearing uh, the the actual Watergate hearings which uh, which finally led to the resignation of Richard Nixon um, there were many, many speeches along the way also uh, by Mr. Nixon from the Oval Office saying things about the tapes and everything else. But I guess the, the most dramatic event was when uh, one uh, man who worked the White House name, I think it was Bob Butterworth, said under oath in his testimony that there were tape recordings in the president's office. Up until that time, I don't think anybody knew that these tapes existed. And I think Mr. Nixon may have been, uh, what's a good word to use, arrogant enough to believe that they were his personal tapes or they belonged to him and they would never become pieces of evidence. Because if he had destroyed them before it was known, Nobody would have ever known what was on those tapes. But once they became known that they were there, they became evidence, and I think it was very hard to destroy it. And if you remember, during part of the Watergate hearings, they talked about the 18-minute gap where they said Nixon's secretary accidentally hit the record button, and they showed how she'd have to really stretch way out of proportion with her leg to do it. Uh, so there were a lot of things that were hard to believe. Um, they ground on and on and on, and finally uh, the House voted to impeach him. And uh, we were getting ready for the Senate, which would, I guess, in effect, try him. And he resigned instead. And then I was down at the White House during his uh, farewell speech, and I thought, He's a man who's really losing it on the air because he ta started talking about his sainted mother and what he had done in his in his life and his uh, for the country and uh, he was really rambling. Uh, if you look at that speech, it was not the normal Richard Nixon that you saw. Then he left the White House and he finally waved as he got into the chopper. And it was a very sad day, and Jerry Ford became president.